thousand years old, the first gold jewelry, everything in there is imported, except uh, you've got copper from Transylvania here. This is in Bulgaria. Copper tools, stone battle axes from, from Scandinavia. You've got a French blade from the central France. You've got jade axes from the Alps. Totally rigged up yeah, bronze, which is way superior. And usually the tin was in a totally different part of the continent. So a lot of trade opened up about moving tin to where the copper was to make this stuff. And uh, the style from that period. Uh, a lot of spirals, just very simple. Uh, I got a lot of jewelry downstairs, which I buy in the north of Thailand, which is made by hill tribes. It looks exactly the same. And that's because they haven't changed what they're doing since 2000 BC, which is kind of cool. Some nice Irish axes here from 2000 BC. Which is based where, does anybody know where Hallstatt culture is, the first Celts? Where do the Celts come from? Huge salt mine. And near that is Haline, which is another one. They got rich selling salt to the Etruscans who traded them wine, which they liked even more. Um, they got really into wine in a big way. But they got very rich, and then you have this very aristocratic, hierarchical Celtic culture coming out of that. It's about 800 BC. And then that sort of style spread different from anywhere. Uh, the Latin style, that's what most people think of as Celtic, all these swirly stuffs and three-armed spirals and leafy organic stuff. That, that's, that's a few centuries after this whole Celtic expansion. Ireland, uh, now they're saying Ireland is probably not very Celtic at all. I mean, Irish is, an, is a Celtic language. There are some Celtic, Celtic artifacts found in Ireland, but only around the Boyne Valley and the Shannon. Actually, south of the Shannon, there's not been a single Celtic artifact found. That's this entire half of the country. So what that suggests is there was never really a big invasion of European Celts here, but it was more like uh, Oprah and Coca-Cola. It was the mainstream culture, and it got here, uh, but not the actual Celts. They were looking for this big Celtic gene. It wasn't there. It just wasn't there. What they did find out was that everybody had a huge amount of North African in Ireland, which was a big surprise to a lot of people. Center of it. And they don't know when or what. The only reason, the reason people think of Ireland as Celtic is two reasons. They trying to form a new identity for themselves to rally around and they were oh yeah we're the Celts i.e. we're not fucking English and that was a big identity movement it was a little misplaced because it's just not true if you're gonna celebrate anything I would have celebrated the Bronze Age Bronze Age in Ireland kicks butt I mean it was unbelievable and all the gold in the Bronze Age was in Ireland if you go to Dublin in the museum there it's just crazy amounts of gold jewelry and quite lavish. So, that's the early kilts. Uh, in this room, um, everything is based on three. If you count the knobs on things, they're usually multiples of three. The spirals are all based on three. You've got three-headed gods all over the place. There's one on the table there. Three was the magic number. That's why all those old uh, fairy tales and stuff all have three wishes and three brides and three this and three that. Yep. It's a natural occurring combination of gold and silver. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows about it. I mean, we're talking about It's not summer. Celtic. <laughs> It has to do with the Book of Kells and all that being so much later, it was influenced by Saxon and Viking art, which is all not work. But it's not Celtic. That was a very late edition. Most Celtic stuff is based on these trumpet shapes, which are called trumpets, and three-armed spirals, the triskel. Uh, also lots of wheels, because the wheel was the uh, symbol of the thunder and lightning god Tyrannus. And these are all sorts of wheels that have to do with sky gods and sun, the sun god as well. Um, some belt buckles. Magic A um, guy I met over the internet. This belonged to, uh, when I got it, 
I bought it, and then if you take the light, you put it at the wrong angle, the image almost disappears. And I was concerned about it because, you know, you get a lot of fakes these days. And I said, you know, what's the deal? It doesn't have any age on it. He said, yeah, it belonged to a mechanic, and he scoured it with, like, mechanic grease and all this stuff. And I said, okay. But then I saw that there was all sorts of age here and this weird broken form, which was obviously something. I mean, you'd have to be a pretty devious guy to make a fake and do all this crap here, which is very strange. Um, and because it was three-headed, I figured it was Celtic. It's from the town called, how do you say it? Rheim? Rheim? R-I-E-M-S. It's in the north of France. Anyway, I let it go, I let it go. I was writing a paper on this three, this tribalism in Celtic stuff, and I was looking at this thing, and I open up my Celtic dictionary, and there's the picture of the exact same god, and it says it's from the same town in France, and that it's the main god of uh, that tribe called the Remy. And the interesting thing was, it was just like my guy, but on top was sitting a recumbent lion, and that's what this was. A head and tail, he was a, a lion that was lying on top here like this. That was kind of cool. This is Cuchulain, the hero of Ulster. One of the reasons Christianity was a kind of a easy thing to, to bring in was uh, they worshipped a guy whose father was God, his mother was mortal, and uh, he dies tied to a stick or a stone, depending on which version you go for. Uh, he had all sorts of divine powers. In the end, they tie him up, but everyone's afraid to approach him because he still has powers even tied up. And the shapeshifter, the Morrigan, she changes into the raven, which is the symbol of war, because ravens eat corpses on the battlefield. She pecks him on the head and uh, finishes him off. Um, I found that one in England. It's um, probably 11th century. It's probably even off of a church, because in the early days, all this kind of, you know, pre-Christian stuff was worked into, you know, Christian uh, iconography. All the Celtic gods, the god of the forest, the animals, the hunt, fertility, abundance. In France, he's always shown with lots of babes around him and coins falling off of him. Uh, he was the man. And of course, the church arrived and they said, we don't want to compete with this, this thing. And they did a spin job and that's where you get the devil. He was originally a good guy. In fact, he shows up in pre-Celtic times all over Europe. There's always a horn, there's horn god paintings in caves in Italy that go back thousands and thousands of years. It's sort of a basic idea. And when you uh, go around, that's one, this was two, that's the last bit of three. They're from this is from England, but they're all across Europe. There's always three females, mother, maiden, and crone, or three sisters, or three mothers. And uh, these are called the Genie Cucolati. How's that for them? In, in uh, Rome, I mean, sorry, in England. They were in the 70s. They'd been finding them in England for years, and nobody knew what they were for until they found them, actually cosmetics inside of them. And uh, they're all about the first century. These are all safety pins. A lot of Saxon stuff here. All this gilded stuff is Viking and Saxon. A lot of uh, Celtic uh, horses, water birds, Spanish brooches with horses. This one even has a chieftain's head in his mouth, the warrior riding home with it.